Hi guys, I trust that everyone at Emmy West is enjoying themselves. Unfortunately, I can't make it for reasons so obvious they're not worth mentioning, but I do have two things to tell you about. Actually, show you. Come have a look. So notice up here that this machine is using a Polaris graphics card. So we know that there are no Warp 3D drivers for Polaris 10, but let's start Wipeout, which is an old Warp 3D game. And it's running. So it should be able to go all the way through, start a game. So what's happening here? Basically, this is all possible thanks to something called Nova Bridge, which is a Warp 3D driver that pipes it through to Warp 3D Nova. So it's a backward compatibility layer, basically. Uh, what does this mean? For end users, this means you don't need to know or care whether an app or a game uses Warp 3D, Warp 3D Nova, Mini GL, GL 4ES, or anything else. So any confusion is gone. For developers, nobody needs to create a Warp 3D driver anymore. Once a Warp 3D Nova driver is available, it's all done and everything will work. Oh, by the way, uh, for Wipeout, let's just stop this now. For Wipeout, you will also need Rewarp and Rewarp 3D uh, because it's an old Warpos game. So let me just tell you how this came about. So end of last year, end of 2020, somebody was talking about how, yet again, about how confusing Warp 3D Nova, Warp 3D and all the naming scheme is. And we realized that what it came down to is we still don't have a backward compatibility layer, which is something I'd hoped somebody else would write. Um, was it 3D came close, but it was never finished. And then at that point, I thought, you know what? I have the source code for the Southern Islands Warp 3D driver. Maybe I can strip it down, remove all the hardware dependent code and use that to make the backward compatibility layer to make Nova Bridge. So I did just that. I stripped it down, built a minimal proof of concept that I could send to Matthew and Trevor over at Aeon. And then from there is a whole lot of work to get all of the little draw modes and multi texturing and everything else working. Uh, found a few surprises while working on it. Um, a lot of the old what 3D drivers have these per game environment variables that you can enable, enable or disable to get around uh, old driver bugs or game bugs. Well, Nova Bridge doesn't have any. I did have to work around a few naughty demos poking straight into the Warp 3D context instead of using the functions that are provided. But there's actually no, there's, there's no environment bent, uh, variables. There are no switches that need to be enabled or disabled on a per game basis. Um, especially Wipeout got a bit of a bad rap. There were multiple environment variables for that saying, you know, it uses chroma testing, but it doesn't dis enable it. Well, it turns out actually it doesn't use chroma testing. It hasn't got anything the, the wrong way around. I don't know what happened when those things were put in. I think what ha what what's most likely is even though Warp 3D is old and a lot simpler than 3D graphics now, it's still complicated enough that you can get confused and it can be very hard to figure out why is something misbehaving. So anyway, if you, maybe I'll show it again. If you look at Wipeout, you'll notice that the, the shadows are there and there's no workaround required to make it happen as, as with the previous driver. It's all just working. Bottom line is uh, soon, as, as soon as, as Nova Bridge is released, backward compatibility for Warp 3D is coming to all supported Warp 3D Nova graphics cards. So that right now it's, it's, it's Polaris and Southern Islands that they're all, they're all supported. And the naming confusion and seeming complexity of all the different 3D graphics subsystems 
to a large, large extent will go away because you don't need to know. You don't need to know, as I said, you don't need to know that uh, OpenJK, for example, is an old mini GL game and that Spencer has walked through you over. It'll all just work.